everyone and welcome to the year was the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party causing all your friends to question hey who invited you like seriously why are you here I'm your host, Michael Montalvo, and for the next few minutes, we will swim through the river of time to try to find out what makes today truly unique. On this episode, we examine the events that occurred January 27th. As you may have pieced together from our many episodes on the topic, we here at The Year Was are fans of space. We have talked about Uranus, the moon, Apollo, Gemini, Hubble, Chuck Yeager, and Kennedy, who along with the Russians, kick-started the space race into high gear. So it should be no surprise that we are once again talking about space. Unfortunately, while we often talk about the positives or the accomplishments of the space program, today we are talking about one of the great tragedies. The year was 1967, and on this day, January 27th, American astronauts Virgil, Gus Grissom, Roger Chaffee, and Edward White II died in the Apollo 1 fire. The launch of Apollo 1 was to take place in February, and was set to be the first manned mission of the Apollo space program, the program that would eventually take man to the moon. But to do that, you have to test your equipment, and that's what the crew of Apollo 1 set out to do that day. Climbing into the command module around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, they prepared for a plugs-out test of the spaceship. A plugs-out test, for those of you who don't know, is when all the cables tethering the ship to the ground are removed to ensure the ship can run on its own power. These cables are, but are not limited to, power, as previously stated, and hard communication lines. The test was classified as non-hazardous because of the lack of fuel, but despite this, there were still dangers that ultimately led to the fire. But we will discuss that in a moment. This dress rehearsal began about 1 p.m., and sometime into it, a bad smell was noticed, causing the countdown to be put on hold. This took about an hour to fix before they were able to continue. No cause was found for the smell. At some point, the crew began to experience communication problems that lasted for hours. Grissom can be heard saying on the recordings, How are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between two or three buildings? At 6.31 p.m., a single sentence cut through the static and brought panic and dread to the ground crew. We have a fire in the cockpit. Then, a scream. The transmission continued, Get us out of here! We're burning up! But despite efforts, little could be done. Those who were watching a video feed saw White reach for the handle of the hatch before the command module burst into flames. The resulting noise led many to believe that the module had exploded. Technicians raced in with fire extinguishers, but they were of little help when faced with the fiery scene. After they were able to extinguish the flames, it took five minutes to open the hatch, but there was barely anything left to see. One reporter said, It looked like the inside of a furnace a darkened, dingy compartment. Its walls are covered with slate-gray deposit of smoke and soot. Its floor and couch frame are covered with ashes and debris. Grissom's body was found laying on the floor of the command module. Ed White was found laying sideways just below the hatch. An investigation determined he was trying to open the hatch as per the emergency procedure, but was ultimately unable. Chaffee was strapped into his seat, as procedure dictated that he maintain communication while White tried to open the hatch. In total, it was all over in about 18 seconds. The official cause of death was listed as cardiac arrest due to the high levels of carbon monoxide. The fire had melted their suits and the oxygen tubes, and the lethal atmosphere caused asphyxiation. So what happened? A couple of things. A NASA review board looked over the incident, and the U.S. Senate conducted their own separate investigation. But let's go back for a bit. NASA and the United States had been going into space for some time by this point, and the spaceships they used were designed and built by McDonnell Aircraft, at least for Mercury and Gemini. The Apollo spacecraft was designed and built by North American Aviation, a company that had received acclaim for the X-15, a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft. 
So while North American had success and experience with planes, it had little with spaceships. In an effort to cut costs on labor, North American used a machine to bundle wires, which, according to space shuttle veteran John Young, made some wires appear frayed, and as a result, produced short circuits. I knew it when I saw it, and I saw it in spades in the command module. Further, NASA was in a hurry to beat the Russians to the moon, and even had spacecraft 012, Apollo 1, shipped from California to Florida with significant engineering orders not complete. This is according to the accident report and the article I read. While astronauts were aware of these issues and complained, they didn't complain too loudly for fear of getting removed from their mission. Now, let's go back again. The Earth's atmosphere is made up of more than just oxygen. The stuff we breathe every day is a mix of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and the rest here on Gilligan's Island. In the days of Mercury and Gemini, an atmosphere of pure oxygen worked, and also meant a lighter environmental control system. Eating as little weight as possible resulted in looking for ways to cut that weight, and NASA figured if it worked for Mercury and Gemini, it would work now for Apollo. And so Apollo 1 was tested with an atmosphere of 100% oxygen. Add this to the combustible material such as the Velcro to keep things from floating away and the nylon spacesuits, which burned easily, and it results in tragedy. The investigation found that a spark caused by the wiring penetrated the Teflon coating and resulted in a fire that was fed by the things it could burn and fueled by the pure oxygen air. So what safety steps were taken to ensure that things like this didn't happen again? Plenty. New wire coatings were developed. A 60-40% oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere was implemented. The escape hatch was redesigned and became an outward opening door instead of an inward opening door. Velcro and other combustible materials were removed, and the suits were changed from nylon to better cloth, which doesn't burn. And understandably, and most importantly, quality control saw a major increase. Roger Chaffee and Gus Grissom were both buried in Arlington National Cemetery, while Ed White was buried at West Point. In 2017, NASA put the hatch on display at Kennedy Space Center for the 50th anniversary of the tragedy. The exhibit had the cooperation of the astronauts' families and acts as a tribute to the men. As a final note, I want to mention that every year in January, NASA holds a day of remembrance for the astronauts lost in the United States' three space tragedies, Apollo 1 in 1967, the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986, and the Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003. This year, it is to be held on the 28th in Arlington National Cemetery, where they will lay a wreath and at the Space Mirror Memorial in Florida, where they will broadcast the ceremony for those who wish to watch it. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.